HMS Zinner, 1350 scale, Mirage Hobby. Let's take a look. Welcome to Model Kit Stuff and in today's first impressions video we are looking at this ship kit. It's in 1 to 350 scale um, and it's of a flower class corvette, um, in this case HMS Zinnia um, by Mirage Hobby. This is one of um, four or so flower class corvettes that Mirage released 2013-2014. Um, and they're all basically the same kit with slightly different parts depicting um, four different vessels. Um, this is the second release in uh, 2013. Um, and what we've got on the box is the usual Mirage Arrow, which is part of their um, logo. Um, we've got a really nice picture of the uh, ship steaming through um, rough seas. Um, it tells us on this side that it's a 1 to 350 um, scale, gives us the uh, kit number which is 350802, tells us it's made in Poland, gives us uh, an image of the decals. There's a little bit of history on the side of the box. Then on this side of the box, it tells us this is a, a model kit for adult collectors and gives us um, a side profile image of the uh, actual vessel that we're going to be building. And then it's just a repeat on the side. So a um, little bit of history. HMS Zinnia was um, built in Middlesbrough at the um, Smith Dock Company on the south bank uh, of the tease there. Um, she was launched in November of 1940 uh, and entered service in March 1941. Um, her role was working with convoys in the North Atlantic um, and doing some port patrols, uh, mine, uh, mine detection and so on. Um, and she was sunk by um, U-564 um, on convoy QG-71, um, and where she exploded and sank just off Portugal. So let's start with our instructions, which are an A4 portrait style fold-out single sheet. Really, it's an A3 sheet that's just been folded up. And our instructions are um, CAD drawings um, in the main. Um, you can see that they are numbered and they are divided up. If you look closely, you can see little dividing lines. Um, so we start with um, one um, and it's all telling us that we need to cut some openings there. It gives us some very precise measurements. 2.5 millimeters, 1.5 millimeters, um, so that we get the uh, opening right at the um, stern there. Um, and then in step two, we're putting the two um, hull halves together. We've got the rudder going in, uh, propeller going in, um, the forecastle and the um, stern deck area with the bulkhead in the middle there. They're all pretty much the same format um, Corvettes, the flower class. Um, so at this stage, they all look fairly similar. Then we've got the uh, middle deck area going down with the uh, skylights on. Um, we can see the uh, winding equipment being added at the back and the support frames that go underneath uh, which will be for the um, life rafts. Step four, we're adding some detail, a little bit difficult to make out exactly what they are from, from here. And then we've got what looks like plastic ladders going in. Um, 
then in step five we've got some torpedoes are they being added um not quite sure what they are um and then we've got depth charges and um the the cranes which are for handling your depth charges um which are molded into the depth charging rack so you basically got two sides so you'll have to paint them up carefully to get them to look right as we go over the page we can see that we've got step eight we're adding the um uh gun tub there and we're also adding the um depth charge throwers um we've got the main um superstructure middle superstructure base for the funnel and the uh, gun going in uh, and some locker um, step 10 we've got funnels going in um, cranes for handling the depth charges um, step 11 um, those sub assembly depth charge racks are going in the funnel um, we've got separately molded uh, pipe work, ventilation pipe work going up there, which is good. A uh, couple of cable reels going on. Step 12, mainly ventilation, um, access um, door cover, um, uh, mess chimney. Uh, step 13, got the uh, davits and lifeboats going on. We appear to have options so we can have them um, swung in or um, swung out, depending. Nice to see we've got the little detail of the uh, spacer bar there. Um, and then we are building up the bridge in step 14. Um, so looks like it's probably solo, solid windows, but we'll have a, have a look when we look at the plastic parts. Then we've got the uh, upper bridge going into place step 17 is the mast 18 we're adding the mast um, and the final bits of superstructure uh, step 19 we are adding uh, forward splinter shields step 20 we've got the main gun base platform being added in along with the um, anchor there, um, some more ventilation um, and access ladders and then the main guns being added um, along with um, the little edge pieces, armoured edge pieces there for a bit of protection. Um, step 23, we've got focal details, we've got fair leads and funnels and bollards going on. Step 24, she's being added to her single uh, uh, pedestal base and then we've got some pictures step 25 showing all angles and a rigging plan which is really lovely so many companies don't bother with a rigging plan so this is really nice to see shows you the full rigging plan from above so you've got an understanding of where it goes each side should be the same um, and then a slightly uh, forward on view, which is the best view for giving you the um, signal ropes. Um, yeah, that's quite, uh, looks like we've got quite a high part, uh, part count, quite an easy to follow set of instructions. They're not bad at all. We've got the paint instructions and effectively um, on this side, you've got more history and some technical data and then um, on this side, this is all we've got in the way of painting instructions. Um, other than this here, so we've got some text which explains this is the um, dark splinter pattern used by the Royal Navy. Gives us the three colours, gives us the original colour references used by the Admiralty. Um, and tells us that basically anything that's within the um, camouflage area um, on the deck is painted in the camouflage co cover colour other than the wooden deck. Now, my slight 
issue with all of this is they're not showing you a top-down view. Uh, so I don't know whether we've got just wooden deck or whether there's Centex down um, or what. So uh, that uh, they could have done with doing a, a, a bird's eye view personally, but there you go. Um, they also have some bits sticking out there which are white. There was no paint instructions called out in the um, in the instructions as you went, so we're going to have to understand what they are. But they're they're definitely Royal Navy white. So I, I don't know what they are. Are they some form of raft or what are they? Don't know. Um, but there's no real reference to them. They've not referenced them as a colour, but they're clearly depicted differently. So a little bit of research is needed. Um, again, it does show the rigging, which is nice. Um, and it does tell you about mounting the flag on there. Um, and at the bottom, it does say um, that more experienced model makers can attempt to make railings on the bow deck and the main spar deck. Obviously, we didn't see railings included um, in the kit. Um, they're also not calling out the, the black for the hull or even the um, uh, bronze colour for your propeller. So um, basically you're going to have to choose your own paint system and do your own research to match these colours. Decals come in a little Ziploc bag which is nice, keeps them protected. There's no tissue paper but then that usually comes off in kits anyway so I do wonder why they, why they still do it. Um, right, um, what we've got, if you ignore all of that, there, that, that bottom third of it is all um, junk, then what you've got is the pennant marks, one flag, and these two very small little black marks should actually be uh, like a, a brown and brass colour, that's the name for going on the superstructure. Um, so there's no um, depth markers, um, which is obviously a disappointment. Um, otherwise, they've covered the the main uh, decals that you'd require for the ship. Um, the decals felt really uh, quite thin, actually, so they should be all right. There's no huge amounts of decal film or anything. Mirage decals are usually pretty good. We have three sprues in the box altogether. This is the largest one. Um, and you can see that what we've got is the two fuse, uh, fuse large, two hull halves. We've got um, the, I think that is the top for the display base actually, um, with that single hole. And that's, yeah, and that's the, pe the pedestal for it. So, that's that's a lot thinner than it looked in the um, instructions, um, and then we've got the um, forward deck area here um, and various parts in the middle. So if we start with the two hull halves, all the plating is nicely shown on here. It disappears underneath. Um, but from a side on view, it looks very nice indeed. Um, the bilge keel is a little chunky, and you can see how it's sort of a it, it sort of molded into the bottom there, sort of out of shape. So you might want to go in with a little triangular file and try and um, shape the bottom of that possibly. But again, side on as you look on it, looks fine. Um, it's nice and crisply moulded, there's no flash or anything. I do have some sink right here um, at the tip of the bow there, just above the hose pipe. Um, the scuttles all have eyelids on, they're quite finely moulded. Um, there's a little bit of flash blocking up that opening there. Um, that scupper, otherwise it's okay. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that actually. It's really nice. Um, yeah, same on both both sides, and the shape is 
all appears to be correct. There is actually a very faint line on the inside, which is the area where you're cutting out. So as well as the measurements given in the instructions, you have got a bit of a guide. Um, then we've got this um, deck here. We're going to have to open out the um, horse pipe openings at, at the deck level, but that's not an issue. Uh, we've got a hatch that's really nicely moulded. The deck planking is really nicely done. The brake water is a little bit thick, and obviously it has no um, gussets there supporting it. Um, although the gussets are uh, moulded onto the deck for the splinter shield that goes around there, so that's nice. The little hatches have got hinges on, which is nice to see. We've got the uh, boat mount points, the chocks there are all moulded on. Again, a little thick, but what you could do with a sharp knife is just cut them down a little bit. By Take about a third off and thin them down, and that would be easy to do. And then you've got uh, the base there for building your structures around. A couple of steps moulded on. The life rafts. Oh yeah, they've got thwarts in and planking in, so that's nice. Um, we've got the um, side armoured plates there, which have got gussets on, so that's lovely. Um, we've got the um, doors moulded into the um, bulwarks there that goes into the, um, runs across the width of the ship as you step down. Um, we've got little individual life rings moulded on on their um, mounting points. That's a really lovely bit of moulding actually. Some nice detail on here. Tiny, tiny parts. Separate bollards, so they're not moulded on, so that's nice to see. Separate fair leads, separate um, davits, they're really nice as well. Um, not quite sure what they are. Uh, the two ship's boats, I mean, they're tiny, but they're nicely precisionally moulded. There's no ejector pins on the inside. A um, little bit of paint and a wash and they'll pick out really nicely. Um, then we've got the um, winding gear there for the for the front, the the windlass, really nicely moulded, and the main gun, again really nicely moulded, and the anchor, and some separate boxes. This is the gun um, shield. It's a little bit thick, but what they've done is they've chamfered the edges, so as you look at it, it looks about right actually. Um, and then the propeller, um, we've got three blade propeller with um, six sprue gates. So some careful removal and clean up of that. But the shape is lovely, um, as is the shape of the rudder, all good. Some lovely, lovely parts here. Some very nice moulding. It's a little bit flashy, going to need a little bit of a scrape, the davits for example. But the fair leads and bollards and anchors are all nice and crisp. Look at those. Nothing wrong with that. Flip it over. You can see the doors there and the detail in the wraps. So our second sprue has the uh, remainder of the upper deck there um, and then we have the lower deck and there is no walkway, Semtex walkway marked out so I'm assuming we're on steel deck and um, wood deck so a little bit of research on paint colours um, uh, and then we should be okay. Um, the Moulding is all crisp. I can't see any sink or anything in the deck particularly. 
No, all good. Um, the skylights there. Um, if you paint those individual um, glass circles, they should look quite nice. It should stand out a little bit. Um, that's another skylight at the back there. Um, then we've got all the little davits. Not quite sure what that is. There's a little rectangular box there that's got quite a bit of sink in. Um, not sure what that is. That's the mounting point for the windlass, I think. Um, and I'm not sure what they are. Are they paravanes? Was it for mine sweeping? Not quite sure what they are. They don't look like torpedoes. They're sort of the wrong shape. So I imagine it's some form of sonar or something. Don't know. Don't know. And I'm not sure what they are. So those are the things that appear to be painted white. Not quite sure. Superstructure parts are nicely done, although they're missing any detail on the sides. Same on this upper bit here. There is no detail, so we're lacking a little bit there. Um, the, the chimney from the, the mess um, is very delicate. I have to take that off carefully. Um, and there is not much in the way of detail along the superstructure on the um, stern there. Um, the rack, the base for the rack, you know, that should be um, much more detailed than it is. That that would be like a, a complex metal framework. So I can understand it being solid at this scale. Um, but yeah, you might want to look at whether you've got some options to do something with that. Okay, final sprue. Um, and we've got superstructure parts here, the bridge. It is all solid windows, but you can you can paint those up and they'd look fine. Um, we've got the mast there, which is really nice. Um, the gun shield, which looks really nice as well. Uh, actually, this is the um, depth charge racks. And the depth charges look fairly solid in there. So you might want to try and cut those out and put individual bits of plastic rod in once you've put the two halves together. That's a possible. Um, but the legs will go at either side of those solid triangular lumps we just saw on the deck. So they, that will add a little bit of detail. Um, that's our funnel cap, which is solid. Um, I'm not sure I'm a fan of that. Um, really, in between each one, these triangles in between these raised areas should really be hollow. But whether we could clean them out with a point of a sharp knife, I don't know. It's quite a thick bit of plastic. Um, we've got our raised gun tub, which looks good. It has a lip on it, which makes that look a little thicker. Um, then we have our funnels. Um, doesn't matter how thick they are with that solid cap on. Funnel looks all right. You could drill holes underneath these little lines here for the guide ropes. All the little tiny supports. There's a lot of little parts. All our vents are solid, but the shape's good and looks right. And we've got some mushroom vents there. Another gun, more vents, the throwers for the uh, that go down the side for the um, depth charges, with depth charges mounted in, so they look okay. Um, you have more funnels there, um, sorry, vents, and they they have some sink in them. So where you've got the sink, you could just open that up a little bit and. Try and make that look like a fun uh, uh, event. I keep wanting to say funnel. 
and then lots of depth charges to be stowed along the side of the deck. Not quite sure what those little round things are. Searchlight. Lots of tiny detail. Moulding's actually really nice. I quite like it. Um, it lacks a little bit of finesse um, that you might get from some of the big manufacturers, but actually it's going to be quite a nice representation. And quite a bit of this, some companies would just mould it in or just ignore it. So 10 out of 10 for effort, I think. There is aftermarket available, so let's have a look at the aftermarket um, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. So, White Ensign models give you a generic uh, Flower Class Corvette etch set, um, designed by Peter Hall um, of Atlantic Models. What you've got is a single sheet that's covering off the main um, parts of the, of the ship. So be careful with it being generic. It may not everything may apply to your particular model. So don't think you've got to add it on. Flower class Corvettes had some differences. So anyway, there we go. We've got all sorts of stuff there: brake waters, frames for the um, depth chargers. We've got the supports for the bridge areas. Obviously, we've got all the railings. Um, we've got the side pieces for the um, access to the uh, gun tub. Uh, we've got the, the lower main gun emplacement base. Looks like we've got um, new bridge deck and bridge. Um, all sorts of different bits of pieces there. Um, Anti-aircraft gun. Um, we've got bits for going into the uh, floats there, um, ladders, anchor chains, all sorts of little bits and pieces. Uh, yeah, you can see there we've got one of those radar um, uh, encasements which we've not got on this kit. So just be a little bit careful because um, it is generic. But that all looks very nice. It's white ensign models, so you know um, it's going to be well designed. Let's have a look at the instructions. So, as always with white ensign, um, you've got a relief picture of the complete fret that's numbered, and then um, the description of what the item is. So, if there's something you're not sure what it is, you it will tell you here, uh, which is really helpful. Um, then as we flip over, um, this is all done in sub assemblies so you fit it in your instructions um, as you have a need. Um, so we've got the um, armaments being done, so depending on which um, model you're doing, what you need, uh, there's lots of different ones there. This for example isn't included on the Zinnia. Um, you can see you've got two different types of radar lanterns, different radar antennas for different periods in the war. Um, you've got a late bridge platform, um, so that won't work on, on our model. Forward gun deck, that will be usable. Um, you might be able to use some of the photo etch to thin down your uh, bulwark, so, however, so have a look at that. Um, then you've got um, a later bridge with um, compass platform. Um, enclosed bridge, compass platform. Extended aft gun platform. Um, flare rail assembly, again, not required on our... Uh, model the acoustic hammer again not required on our model the large um, towing um, hawser drum not required on, on our model railings greatly appreciated depth charge rail assembly 
you can see that's going to add an awful lot of detail to what we've got um, all sorts of railings new funnel cap which is nice um, little vents to go over the um, uh, grills to go over the vents so that'll add some nice detail um, we've got a replacement brake water yeah and that's it so that's the main parts as always there's a written instruction as well um, and it tells you that you've got photo etched detail set for um, HMS Zinnia and HMS uh, and Kusa, which is the first kit which they um, released um, and they're very very similar similar kits um, one being a later version so there you go looks really nice so there you have it HMS Zinnia what are my first impressions well um, I think you've got a nice little kit here in the main um, assuming that the fit is okay everything is crisply molded um, looked very nice um, has all the relevant details on there and lots of lots of individual parts which means that you've got um, crisper thinner more in scale um, parts so overall like it you've got some parts that are molded with some really nice um, finesse and precision and then you've got some other parts that like the funnel cap for example uh, which could have uh, done with a, a little bit more thought and work but in the main given that it's a uh, 1 to 350 scale and it's not big um, in the main painted up it should come together quite well there are some things that are missing and there are some things that aren't in the etch set that are missing so you're going to want to source your own um, etch ladders just to replace the molded on ones that's going to help raise the level of the of the game you are going to want to do the rigging that's going to really help uh, the, the overall finish and you are going to want to do some research and look at guide ropes for the funnel you can see them on the picture here you know there's four there I suspect there was probably six but don't know for sure um, there's other little details you can do like the little straps um, strapping down the um, uh, dinghies there uh, and we need to find out what those things are um, as well so there's a little bit of research needed paint instructions a little bit lacklustre um, the fact that they've given you a camouflage pattern is nice but they haven't really gone into detail about paint or even a paint system they recommend and they haven't um, given you a top-down view having said that they have given you a rigging plan um, obviously I have to mention no depth markers um, they, they should be on there uh, but all in all most of what you need is already in there um, the little bits and pieces that you need to get ladders and so on um, should be easy to get um, aftermarket or from um, leftovers from other sets that you might have used in the past comes with a display base it would be easy to waterline it if you wanted to put it at sea uh, and it will fit in with a lot of your other models if you're a, a 1 to 350 scale uh, ship builder this is quite a nice little addition I think it's nice to have the little ships it gives you a bit more um, perspective about the larger ships and these were such an important part of the um, war effort they were one of the war winning weapons despite the fact that they weren't um, state of the art and you know it's a, basically a whaler that's been um, uh, modified for military use they they were such a huge uh, difference on the convoy system so an important ship all in all and I'm looking forward to building it hope that was useful take care everyone enjoy your modeling and I will see you very soon <laughs>